When it comes to a new Mario Kart game, everyone expects a new Bowser's Castle track. I mean, come on, just look at this guy. Bro's got his own theme park. <clears throat> but yeah, to get to the point, instead of talking about all of the tracks, because, again, being rich means owning too many things, I'll be narrowing down my top 10 Bowser's Castles of all time instead. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below, and feel free to drop down your personal list from worst to best. Anyways, before we dive into it, let's hear a little bit of today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM is a SoCal clothing brand where their main vision is to help people express themselves while providing unparalleled comfort. They were kind enough to send me a few of their products and let me just say that I absolutely love their designs and like how they're light as a feather. These clothes are perfect if you're an avid gamer or content creator like me. Being comfortable as you game or talk to chat is definitely a huge win in my book so I can honestly recommend. Bundle deals for their graphic and basic tees are happening now so click the link in my description below to receive an additional 10% off your order today. Making the top 10, we got the Forgotten Child GBA Bowser Castle 4. Honestly, this one slaps the hardest in Mario Kart Super Circuit. I don't know why Nintendo never brought this track back, but I really love how sophisticated this one is. The turns are difficult, as expected for a special cup course, but I'm also happy to see more tighter turns and the Mecha Koopas making a return. Not to mention, I like how the background kind of fits this whole idea that we made it to the end. It looks like we're in a core room of the castle conglomerate, and if we win right now, we also win in life. At number 9, we have the only SNES track making this list, Bowser's Castle 2. Out of all the Bowser castles in the first Mario Kart game, I just find this one the most balanced. It's pretty doable in 150cc, especially with the game's awful controls. Also, let me just say how satisfying it is to be able to do this section correctly. My favorite way is to just approach it like an S, and yeah, you're golden. And oh yeah, there's a shortcut that's not that important, but if you do get a feather, you can save a lot of time here. So yeah, BC2, while pretty difficult, doesn't feel impossible, and does not make you want to commit a felony every time you hit a wall, like, <clears throat> in every other freaking version. Okay, so here we are with number 8, another GBA Bowser's Castle course, but on Mario Kart DS. This version of Bowser's Castle 2 is honestly just a better version of the original. Mario Kart DS just has way better controls, and what makes the course shine is its multitude of bouncy ramps. And man, is it just so fun to do this all day, and then fall down without any care of the world cause, yeah, you know, these CPUs suck anyway. While the course does not look that complicated, there's a bunch of lava pits that help make it more of a reputable and harder Bowser's Castle track. Also, let me just say, another satisfying thing is getting all them boost panels. Aww yeah, boost panels. Here at number 7, we have Mario Kart 7's Bowser's Castle. Coincidence? I think not. This course is just... eh. Like, it definitely looks better than everything else we've seen on this list, but I just don't think there's enough depth in this course. A lot of the sections in the castle are just way too wide and it's very easy to avoid things like the thwomps, and this shortcut here is pretty much always free. My favorite part of the track is definitely the underwater section because of this cool cut, but it literally only lasts for a couple of seconds and doesn't even have much of a flair to it in the beginning. Not to mention, the ending is always a letdown to me. It's literally just one final turn with nothing. No alternate routes, no enemies, it also has a really bad camera angle for some reason. But yeah, honestly what's really saving this track is its presentation. It's beautiful and I'm happy to say that at least every section looks somewhat distinguishable, but as a whole, yeah, this one is not it, Chief. Next up, we have Bowser's Castle from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now listen guys, I understand that the music slaps and it's super pretty, but man, can this course be exhausting at times. I play this game on 200cc because I'm competitive like that, but a lot of the sections are almost impossible to go through, especially with a million other people next to you. Then you hit a wall and end up ricocheting. Yeah, it's not a really good time. I'll admit that there's a lot of going on here. Lasers, a big wrecking ball that I get hit by almost every freaking time, lots of anti-gravity, a Bowser statue that returns but randomly selects one spot to pound every few seconds, and yeah, you get it. There was just a lot put into it. But I'm just not the biggest fan of this map layout. I think the course fares better in 150cc, but I don't know, 200cc is my preferred way to play this game, so I think somewhere in the middle is where this track deserves to be. Breaking the top 5 spot, we have Mario Kart Wii's version of GBA's Bowser's Castle 3. Just like in my previous ranking video, I'm happy to say that this track got a similar treatment to Deluxe's SNES Mario Circuit 3. This version obviously looks way better, and is also scaled way nicer to fit Mario Kart Wii's mechanics. Seriously, this track is a blast to play on Wii. It's very satisfying making the sharp turns, and I love how this ultra cut screams high risk, high reward. You lose so much time missing it, but if you make it, oh man, you're almost pretty much golden. 
BC3 is also another balanced track where it doesn't feel too easy or too hard. There's plenty of places for people to get pushed off and many other places to improve your lines. The reason why it isn't as high on this list though is because the rest just has way better presentation. Yeah, this track is fun, but when you have tracks that are also super fun and look cool, you get pretty much better ones. Hitting the top 4, we got what I believe is the most unique looking Bowser's Castle track in the entire series. DS Bowser Castle. At first glance, you can tell Nintendo was trying to go for the new Super Mario Bros. DS style, which is something I really dig. Many assets return such as those fire blasters, the big twisting looking cylinder, and those creepy trees in the background. Despite having these cool references, I also think driving on this track is a blast. While the beginning looks like nothing is going on, some turns can be tough because you're going uphill, causing you to sway too much sometimes to one side. I also like how this shortcut isn't always free because those blasters can come out of nowhere and ruin your acceleration, forcing you to go to the normal route. However, I think my favorite part of this is literally riding on the cylinder. It's super easy to fall off and if you're not careful, I remember having good memories just pushing them CPUs off, forcing them to take the longer route back up. But yeah, overall this track has charm and like I said, I think it's super unique and very, very fun to drive on. At number 3, we got none other than the Wii version of N64 Bowser Castle. Just like how Mario Kart DS's GBA's Bowser Castle 2 is the definitive way to play the original BC2, this version of BC64 is the best way to play a classic. For one, this track is long. Probably the longest version in the entire series. But unlike N64 Rainbow Road, N64 Bowser's Castle has substance. In the beginning, there are tons of thwomps trying to stop your way and they are seriously a big threat, especially on 200cc. Not to mention, you have the bridge section which is notorious for setting up tons of traps. Top it all off with windy turns, elevation changes, and this shortcut. Yeah, there's a reason why this sits in the top 3. The layout slaps, the music fits its uneasy atmosphere, and is even friendly for kart players. And for those who don't know, karts are terrible in this game. However, even though this is an extremely fun one, I am so sorry, but the next two are just absolute ballers. Winning the silver medal, we finally welcome Wii's Bowser's Castle. Now, this one is a certified bop. What's not to like about BC Wii? It's absolutely wild. There's so many obstacles that the game just throws at every single player. The wobbly hallway, the infamous corners, a mechanical Bowser trying to end your life with them fireballs, and not to mention those crazy fire pillars at the end of the course. As you can tell, this track has a lot of things going on for it. However, sometimes I feel like there can be a little too much going on, making the design feel a little bit too disconnected. Basically, the sections can sometimes feel like you're rushing every single part, making it seem like it's like more of a Bowser Stadium than an actual castle, but yeah, this is just a minor thing that I noticed. It's still one of the most fun tracks to race on, and I absolutely love the little retro 8-bit theme that they play at the absolute beginning. Overall, a very solid course that's very fitting with Mario Kart Wii's physics and half-pipe mechanics, but despite all of this, nothing can beat our number one. And before we can take a look at that, why don't you guys drop a like if you made it this far in today's video, it will mean a lot and feel free to subscribe for more Mario Kart content similar to this. At number one, we finally have my favorite version of Bowser's Castle, GCN Bowser's Castle. Now, you guys may think I'm a little biased here since I grew up with Double Dash, but hear me out. I think this version checks everything on the list with what makes a Bowser Castle so great. The music, the continuity, the overall feeling of going through a journey, it's all here. I don't think there's ever a dull moment driving on this course. The lightning that strikes ever so often, the creepy faces on things such as the arrows and mountains, Bowser Jr. making a cameo appearance in the room with the Spire Fire Rods, all of this just feels super connected and immersive. Sure, it's not the most busy Bowser Castle ever, but the track doesn't have to be super busy to be good. It still has plenty of obstacles, and its constant dark theme and uneasy but eccentric atmosphere is more than enough for me to feel satisfied every time I drive around it. Overall, GameCube's Bowser Castle is a perfect bridge between N64's Bowser Castle and Wii's Bowser's Castle, where the track isn't either too crazy or too spread out, while also providing a good mix of obstacles, consistent themes, and creepy feels that every Bowser's Castle should have. Thank you all so much for watching today's Mario Kart ranking video. I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to drop a like, comment on your top 10 list, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And remember, Bowser's name backwards is Reswab.